Standing outside a local restaurant, I was suddenly approached by a chef with a startling revelation that left me utterly speechless. My name is Mia, a 27-year-old marketing director. My husband, Matteo, and I share a strong bond both professionally and personally. Our journey together began as co-workers and gradually evolved into a deeper connection through our shared interests and values. After revealing my feelings to him, we started dating and eventually tied the knot. Before we married, Matteo had been upfront about his previous marriage and subsequent divorce. Although it was a short-lived union with no children involved, they parted amicably due to differing life views. Matteo carried some lingering regrets about this chapter in his life, which made him cautious about love. Nonetheless, I embraced his history without reservations, focusing on building our future together. Our marriage kicked off on a high note, but over time, the intricacies of Matteo's past divorce started to emerge. Despite these challenges in our hectic work schedules, we found joy in our daily routines and cherished our weekends together, which were filled with shared activities, mainly because our weekdays offered little time for deep connection beyond quick conversations at dinner. A shared love for culinary arts led us to spend many joyful hours cooking together, exploring new recipes, and delighting in the flavors we created. However, the idea of dining out, once an enjoyable change from our home-cooked meals, became fraught for me due to my severe allergy to fruits from the Rose family, such as apples and strawberries. This condition, which developed in adulthood, makes it risky for me to eat out since even minor contact with these allergens can cause severe reactions. I remember a time when I indulged in too many strawberries, only to end up with my mouth so swollen that breathing became difficult, a stark reminder of the challenges posed by my allergy. This incident profoundly affected my enthusiasm for dining out, turning what used to be a pleasurable experience into a source of anxiety. Thus, despite our love for exploring new culinary landscapes, we often find ourselves constrained to the safety of our own kitchen, where we can control every ingredient, until discovering my allergy to rosacea fruit, I had enjoyed a variety of fruits like strawberries, apples, pears, and peaches. Learning that these beloved fruits were now off-limits was heart-wrenching. The difficulty of identifying safe foods was compounded by the unexpected presence of these fruits in meals I presumed were harmless, leading to adverse reactions. This uncertainty made dining out a nerve-wracking experience and left me wary of buying pre-packaged meals or snacks. The fear of a severe allergic reaction heightened my vigilance. I found myself meticulously checking ingredients, even if it meant repeatedly apologizing to my husband during meals. However, cooking together became a soothing activity, and the support from my in-laws, especially my experienced mother-in-law, eased some of my anxieties, allowing me to enjoy meals without fear and why concerns about allergies were temporarily overshadowed by a joyful event at work. A project I had initiated was successful, earning me a well-deserved promotion. My family, particularly my mother-in-law, was overjoyed, proposing a celebration at a prestigious restaurant within a luxurious hotel, a place I had long dreamed of visiting. Initially, the idea seemed too lavish, and I hesitated, overwhelmed by the restaurant's grand reputation. But my mother-in-law, with her unwavering enthusiasm, assured me warmly, making it hard to resist such a generous and festive gesture. Her joy over my professional success truly touched my heart, yet I couldn't shake off my reservations. Memories of browsing the restaurant's menu online, drooling over their fruit-filled tart, reminded me of what I was missing. Despite my longing, that restaurant visit remained just a dream. The restaurant often sources fruits from the respected Rossi family orchards, which, while esteemed, are problematic for me due to my fruit allergy. In the past, I hesitated to ask for special accommodations at restaurants for fear of being a burden, even though my mother-in-law always mentioned my dietary needs in advance. As a result, we usually opted for places that were less likely to use the fruits that triggered my allergies. Although tempted by the fare at this upscale venue, the potential risk from their frequent use of fruit made me cautious. Ultimately, I chose to decline the invitation to prioritize my health and avoid a possible allergic reaction. Nevertheless, 
My mother-in-law remained enthusiastic about the celebration and revealed that she had a personal connection at the restaurant, ensuring they would accommodate our dietary needs. This was news to both my husband and me. He was surprised to learn about his mother's connection and reassured me about the restaurant's commitment to allergy awareness, something he had noted from previous visits. This new information made me reconsider my initial reluctance, giving me a glimmer of hope that perhaps we could safely celebrate there after all. My mother-in-law had already informed the restaurant about my allergies during the reservation process, and they assured her they would take all necessary precautions. My husband, visibly relieved by this, smiled and encouraged me to fully enjoy the experience, reminding me that it was, after all, a celebration of my recent promotion. Although initially apprehensive due to my allergies, my respect and curiosity for the restaurant had grown over time, fueling my excitement about finally dining there. The special day fell on a weekday, so I decided to take a half day off from work to make the occasion even more memorable. On the day, eager and a bit anxious, I headed straight to the restaurant known for its exquisite ambience. My mother-in-law, ever considerate and not one to boast, matched her enthusiasm with discretion under the circumstances. Driven by her excitement and my own culinary curiosity, we decided to enjoy a lunch together there. Given her history of attentiveness to my dietary needs, I felt a reassuring sense of ease. With our reservation set for 2.20 p.m., we arrived on time but were informed of a slight delay due to the lunch rush, which was a testament to the restaurant's popularity. To pass the time and begin the celebration right, I ordered a flute of champagne while we engaged in lively conversation, soaking in the upscale atmosphere. The champagne I sipped that day was unlike any other I had tried before, its exquisite taste and the slight buzz it provided only heightened my anticipation for the meal ahead. As we waited, I observed the other diners around us, each engaged in their own festive moments, adding to the vibrant atmosphere of the place. As I settled into the plush seating of the upscale restaurant, my gaze wandered over the enticing dishes being served around me, stirring a rush of excitement for our forthcoming meal. However, a sudden vibration from my handbag interrupted the moment. The muffled ring of my phone was an abrupt reminder that I had forgotten to switch it to silent mode, a minor oversight during this special lunch with my esteemed mother-in-law. Earlier that day, I had donned a more elegant outfit than my usual office attire, prompting curious glances and inquiries from my colleagues. When I mentioned my plans to dine out, their well wishes buoyed my spirits as I left the office for the restaurant, located within a grand hotel. My mother-in-law was already there waiting as I arrived, and together we made our way to the restaurant on the first floor. Just as we were about to be seated, my phone rang again. This time, it was a call from work which I answered outside the restaurant to maintain privacy. The call was merely a request for clarification on a document I had submitted, which quickly relieved my initial worries. As I prepared to return to our table, a sudden commotion caught my attention. The chef, looking quite alarmed, urgently approached me, advising me to leave the establishment immediately due to some unspecified danger. Confused and concerned, I followed her instructions, stepping out into the cool air of the street, realized then that the compassionate and understanding mother-in-law I knew would have been worried about my sudden departure without explanation. Yet, instead of concern, her reaction was unexpectedly harsh and critical, even extending to disparaging remarks about my parents and their upbringing of me. Throughout this unexpected confrontation, I remained silent, absorbing the shock of her intense outburst. With a heavy heart and a mind swirling with confusion, I quickly exited the hotel. The gravity of the situation sank in, draining the color from my face as I comprehended the serious tone of the chef's warning. I hailed a taxi, eager to distance myself from the unsettling experience and to take time to process the whirlwind of emotions and events of the day, that evening, as I made my way home, still processing the events of the day, my phone rang. It was my mother-in-law, her voice thick with anger over my sudden exit from the restaurant. She expressed deep embarrassment, having meticulously planned a special celebration only to see it disrupted by what she viewed as my thoughtless vanishing act. In her harsh critique, she challenged the courtesy and upbringing that guided my behavior, a side of her I had never seen before. 
I had always known her as a kind and gentle person. However, the situation took an unexpected turn when she noticed the allergy emblem on my bag. Feeling a responsibility for ensuring our meal was safe, she investigated and was horrified to discover the meal included ingredients that I was allergic to. She hadn't informed me earlier, and had I eaten, I could have suffered a severe allergic reaction. Initially, I couldn't believe that my mother-in-law would knowingly put me at risk. But as it turned out, not only did the meal contain allergenic ingredients in the dessert, but they were also hidden in the main courses, masked within marinades and sauces that were hard to detect. The woman who had warned me earlier had taken the reservation call from my mother-in-law and revealed that no mention of my allergies had been made. Amidst her scolding, my mother-in-law accused me of being an unsuitable wife for her son, which was deeply upsetting. After a lengthy tirade, she seemed to calm down slightly, and that's when I quietly asked her if she had indeed informed the restaurant about my allergies as she had assured me earlier. Her answer was evasive, and it became clear the restaurant had no idea about my dietary restrictions. The warning to leave the restaurant, given by the mysterious woman, suddenly made sense. She was well informed about the intricacies of my mother-in-law's character and urged me to exit quickly, hinting that my mother-in-law would likely follow. This woman turned out to be none other than my husband's ex-wife, who now went by the name Josephine. She had been observing from a distance and recognized the potential danger I was in from the mix-up regarding my allergies. As the new wife in the family, I was navigating my relationships cautiously, particularly with my mother-in-law, whom I initially believed to be kind and gentle. However, the day's events took an unexpected turn when my husband's ex-wife approached me, offering her help. Having endured mistreatment herself at the hands of my mother-in-law, she empathized deeply with my situation. The ex-wife shared that despite her professional culinary training, her life as a full-time housewife was marked by constant criticism from my mother-in-law. When my husband or father-in-law were not around, she faced relentless negative remarks and even had her dishes discarded. Though she considered discussing these issues with her husband, she felt trapped, knowing how well my mother-in-law could mask her true nature, eventually, the ex-wife decided to leave the marriage due to the unbearable home environment and lack of evidence, which was hard to gather under financial constraints and constant scrutiny. She pursued her passion for cooking and established a career as a chef, finding success and fulfillment despite the shadows of her past. When my mother-in-law discovered her working at a restaurant, she tried to exploit her position, leading to confrontations that dredged up painful memories for the ex-wife. Her decision to warn me at the restaurant stemmed from recognizing similar patterns of behavior and a desire to prevent further harm. The day in question, the revelation that my mother-in-law had not informed the restaurant of my allergies, and her attempts to blame the ex-wife, cast doubt on her motives. Despite her defensive stance, I was determined to uncover the truth. I knew about the restaurant's stringent allergy protocols and their practice of recording calls, which provided the evidence I needed to confront her effectively. During our conversation, which was discreetly recorded, everyone present, including my parents and my husband Mateo, witnessed her harsh treatment of me. They also heard her admit intentions that seemed geared towards putting me at risk with allergens. After this intense exchange, feeling a mix of betrayal and vindication, I left the restaurant in haste, seeking refuge and time to reflect on these revelations, deeply pondering the next steps in dealing with this complex family dynamic. After the intense confrontation at the restaurant, I sought refuge at my parents' home where my husband, Mateo, soon joined us. Amidst a tense silence, my mother-in-law called. Her voice filled with defiance and envy was unmistakable. She was upset that I had gained recognition at work and favor in the neighborhood, overshadowing her own achievements. With an arrogant tone, she claimed that no one would believe my side of the story. Before this incident, I would never have thought her capable of such behavior. As we pondered our next move, she unexpectedly called again. Reacting quickly, I put the phone on speaker and started recording the call, capturing her self-incriminating statements. She was taken aback when she realized the conversation was being recorded, her voice trembling as she asked if her son, Mateo, was with us. The shock of her secrets being revealed was palpable. Mateo, who had been quietly collecting evidence, finally broke his silence. 
His voice, heavy with restrained anger, confronted her actions. It is unfathomable that you could do this, mother, he said. Her response was a series of weak excuses, but they sounded hollow, especially against her earlier aggressive outburst. The fallout from this revelation was severe. She was eventually evicted from her home, left without familial support or financial stability. Despite her role as a homemaker, her husband, feeling a residual sense of pity, secured her a modest apartment and covered the first month's rent, urging her to find work. However, her lack of ambition, possibly stemming from her previous domestic role, made it difficult for her to pursue employment. Mysteriously, she continued to rely on both Mateo and me for support, which was troubling given her previous actions, hope she manages to find the means to support herself and at some point compensate for her actions, as we have no wish to include her in our lives again. It seems her actions were driven by jealousy, reveling in the distress she caused me. On another note, Mateo's ex-wife, who had entered our lives quite unexpectedly demanding money, was met with firm opposition from Mateo, making it clear she was not welcome. Rumors later suggested she found work at a local supermarket, but her disheveled appearance and unpleasant demeanor hinted at ongoing struggles. Despite her quiet nature, she was not favored by many due to her behavior, complicating her efforts to rebuild her life alone. In our community, I've established myself as an independent and successful individual, gaining respect and holding a higher social standing, qualities that initially earned me admiration as a daughter-in-law. However, as time passed, the true nature of my mother-in-law surfaced, revealing a darker side that targeted those she perceived as weaker, particularly Mateo's ex-wife, Josephine. Mateo expressed deep regret to Josephine for not recognizing the bullying she endured from his mother. At the time, his new job and the trust he placed in his mother clouded his judgment. Thankfully, their conversation ended on a peaceful note, with Matteo relieved to learn that Josephine had moved on and found happiness with someone new. Over time, my mother-in-law's envy became apparent as she struggled to assert dominance over me, secretly hoping for my downfall. This tension eventually led to a dramatic confrontation involving Matteo, his father, and her, culminating in her confession and their ultimate decision to cut ties with her amidst these challenges. I formed a friendship with Josephine. Despite being Mateo's former wife, there were no concerns about their past relationship affecting ours. I valued having a friend who was similarly ambitious in her career pursuits. After resolving the issues with my mother-in-law, Mateo and his father threw a joyful party to celebrate my promotion, which reinforced my determination to continue working hard, now free from any worries about my mother-in-law's interference. The confrontation with her was a turning point, lifting a tremendous weight off my shoulders. Her toxic behavior had overshadowed our lives for too long, and distancing her from our inner circle brought a refreshing sense of peace and clarity. This ordeal brought Matteo and me closer than ever, strengthening our marriage's foundation as we committed to supporting each other unconditionally and protecting our relationship from external negativity. Josephine became a constant source of inspiration through our shared experiences of overcoming adversity. Her remarkable resilience in rebuilding her life and pursuing her passion in the culinary arts was incredibly motivating. Our bond, forged in the fires of shared struggle, became a testament to the power of friendship and mutual support in the face of challenges, seeing Josephine thrive in her culinary career was a powerful reminder of the endless possibilities that open up when one has the courage to escape toxic situations. Under her guidance, I regained the confidence to explore the dining scene again. She introduced me to a network of eateries that prioritized dietary needs with utmost professionalism, reigniting my passion for enjoying meticulously crafted dishes without the fear of allergic reactions. This newfound freedom in the culinary realm inspired Matteo and me to explore beyond our previous boundaries. With renewed zest, we traveled to exotic locations, immersed ourselves in diverse cultures, and created lasting memories that strengthened our bond. As time passed, Matteo's father grew to admire the strong, independent woman I had become. He frequently praised my resilience and Matteo's steadfast loyalty, often expressing his gratitude for the partnership we nurtured. Meanwhile, Josephine continued to excel in her field, 
eventually opening her own acclaimed restaurant. She became a trailblazer in the culinary world, championing inclusivity and catering to various dietary requirements. Whenever Mateo and I visited her establishment, we felt like royalty, savoring each bite of her expertly prepared dishes, our social circle expanded to include individuals from all walks of life who shared our values of compassion, integrity, and unwavering support. We formed a close-knit community, celebrating each other's successes and providing comfort during difficult times. In the evenings, as Mateo and I relaxed in the comfort of our home, we would reflect on the tumultuous journey that led us to this point. The challenges we faced had only solidified our bond and reinforced our determination to live life on our own terms, free from the constraints of toxicity and manipulation. Looking back, I realized that the most valuable lesson I learned was the importance of surrounding oneself with people who uplift and empower, rather than those who seek to diminish and control. It was a difficult truth to face, but one that ultimately set the stage for a life filled with genuine happiness, love, and fulfillment. As the sun set on another day, I would gaze into Mateo's eyes, feeling grateful for the peace and contentment we had found together, knowing that we had built a life that truly belonged to us, and those quiet moments together, I often expressed my deep gratitude for Mateo's unwavering love and support. No matter what challenges we might face in the future, I was certain that we would overcome them together, strengthened by the resilient bond we had crafted through adversity. As time went on, each year brought its own set of adventures, challenges, and opportunities for growth. Mateo and I stood by each other as steadfast partners, navigating the complexities of life with a bond that had been tempered in the trials we had faced. Our careers also thrived. Mateo's dedication and sharp business acumen lifted him to the upper ranks of his company, while my innovative ideas and strategic insight secured me a prominent position at the executive table. Despite our professional achievements, we always kept our focus on what was most important, our family, eventually, the desire to start our own family grew. After thoughtful preparation, we welcomed our first child, a beautiful daughter we named Sophia. Becoming parents was a transformative experience, enriching our lives with unspeakable joy and a new sense of purpose. We embraced the challenges of parenthood wholeheartedly, supporting and guiding each other every step of the way. Josephine's role in our lives grew even more significant as she became a beloved aunt to Sophia. Her visits were a highlight for us all, she delighted our daughter with stories from her adventures in the kitchen and taught her how to craft culinary creations that catered to the most discerning palates and mindful of allergies. Fia's upbringing was shaped by these shared experiences, enriching her childhood with love, learning, and the joy of good food. Through it all, Mateo and I grew closer, our lives deeply intertwined with those we loved, as we built a future that was about more than just surviving, it was about thriving together. We made it a priority to instill in Sophia the values that had guided us through our most challenging times, resilience, integrity, and the importance of surrounding oneself with a loving and supportive community. Mateo's father, now a cherished grandfather, took immense pride in the family we had built together. His steadfast support and sage advice were invaluable as we navigated the complexities of raising a child in a rapidly changing world. Our achievements extended beyond our personal lives, our professional endeavors also flourished. I led initiatives that promoted inclusivity and empowerment within our industry, inspired by my own experiences with dietary challenges. Mateo's sharp business acumen and strategic vision drove his company to new heights, enhancing his reputation as a formidable leader, throughout it all, our bond with Josephine remained strong. Her restaurant became a frequent gathering place for our family, where we celebrated life's milestones, savored her exquisite cuisine, and basked in the warmth of her joyful spirit. As time passed, our circle of friends and colleagues grew, welcoming new faces who shared our values and aspirations. This diverse community enriched our lives, adding a vibrant tapestry of perspectives and experiences, and quiet moments, Mateo and I would reflect on the journey that brought us to where we were, filled with a profound sense of gratitude. The challenges we faced, though daunting at times, had shaped us into the individuals we were today, resilient, compassionate, and unwavering in our commitment to each other. We knew that future obstacles would arise, 
and more storms would come, but we faced them with a newfound fearlessness, secure in the knowledge that we were never truly alone. Our family, love, and the solid support system we had built would see us through, just as they had time and again. As the sun set on another beautiful day, we would gather our loved ones close, cherishing the precious moments and eagerly anticipating the adventures yet to come. We were secure in the knowledge that our bond was unbreakable, our resilience unshakable, and our love eternal.